What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video by yours truly. Today we're going to be giving you a Ning Guang guide and explaining everything there is to know about the money driven sexy waifu from Li Wei. Uh, if you end up enjoying the video, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, you know the drill. There will be timestamps below so you can get exactly to the part that you clicked on this video for. Extract that information and go about your business player. With that being said, I know I don't like to fuck around, let's go ahead and get straight into it. Uh, Ning Wong's normal attacks. That's what we're going to start off. We're going to cover the whole fucking kit first for people who've never played with Ning Wong and are considering maining her. Cover that kit, and then we'll get to the artifacts, the build, the weapon, you know, the whole shebang. Anyways, her normal attack, which is actually the most important thing about her kit, the, the thing you'll be doing the most damage with. Uh, if you disagree with me, hear me out, and then you might agree with me afterwards. I'm not saying that her elemental burst doesn't do a fuck ton of damage. It does. It does a, a bunch of damage, but it's not the main damage per second. Uh, you know, DPS that you're doing. It's the charge attack that's doing all of that. Anyways, her normal auto attacks. Every time you do a normal auto attack and it lands, you accumulate a Star Jade gem on your back. You can only accumulate up to three of these bad boys. I know it looks like there's nine of them, but there's only three. There's three of them, and, you know, every time you do a charge attack, they're going to fire off as well. And sometimes they do do that dumbass shit, but what, the way they're supposed to work is they follow and hit the same target that your charged attack hits. Now, sometimes one or two of them may go and hit a different target. But yeah, basically every time you charge the attack, those things fire off as well. Now, if we go and look at her talent <clears throat> at level 8, you'll see that her charge attack is 279%, while the damage per star jade is 79.4%. Let's just round it up to 80 for easy math. 80 times 3, that's 240%. So you can see that if you do a charged attack and the damage per star jade, all three of them hit the same target, you're almost doing double the damage of the charged attack damage. It's just not quite, not quite that. Uh, and then you can see her normal attack does 44.8%. Thus, we don't give a fuck about the normal attack doing damage. We don't need it to do damage, we just need it to accumulate the damage per star jade. Or I'm sorry, accumulate the star jades around my back so that when I do my charge attack, they're going to contribute to that overall burst DPS we get from the charge attack. Now, the other thing that makes Ning Guang absolutely cracked is her passive talent. Her first passive talent at that. When she has a star jade on her back, whether it's one, two, or three, she just has a single star jade on her back, her charge attack doesn't even consume stamina. So you can literally do one attack and then charge. One attack and then charge and she's never going to consume any stamina at all obviously what you want to do for maximum dps accumulate all three of them and then charge attack and then all three of them hit at the same time but yeah that shit is absolutely cracked i mean you think about it you got to get a whole constellation level for hu tao for her to get that same perk on her uh kit you know so that's absolutely one of the most busted passive talents i've ever seen in this game the fact that her charge attack on my build that I have for her right now hits for 40 fucking K times two plus another three 10 Ks from the Star Jades. The fact that it hits that hard and it don't cost no stamina is that's beyond me, bro. I don't know. That's, that's absolutely beyond me. So, yeah, it's the most important thing about her kit. You want to take this as priority number one in terms of leveling up her talents. You want to level this up to level eight first before you level everything else up. And of course, if you want to crown her, take it to level 10 first. And then priority number two is going to be her ult. And priority number three is going to be her elemental skill. Now, don't get it twisted. Ning Guang is one of those champions where all... I keep saying champions. Fucking League of Legends terminology, bro. Uh, is one of those characters that her whole kit is fucking amazing. You, you don't want to not level any specific, you know, talent. You want to level them all because they're, they're all absolutely cracked. One of the things that I do like to do with Ning Guang is obviously auto attack, dash, auto attack, dash, auto attack, dash. But for stamina optimization, if you want to optimize your stamina, you can also auto attack jump. Just to save stamina. And then once you get three stacks up behind you, you let that charge attack go. Uh, moving on to the elemental skill, the Jade Screen. When you throw this bad boy down, it does a fuck ton of damage. I know it doesn't look like much in terms of doing damage, but if you throw this shit on characters, it does a fuck ton of AoE Geo damage. For me personally right now, I'm talking like 50, 60K on a crit strike. It's, it's nuts. But there's a couple of beneficial things about it, actually. When you walk through it, first and foremost, you get a 12% Geo damage bonus, which is thanks to uh, Ning Guang's second passive. This one right here is Strategic Reserve. A character that passes through the Jade screen will gain a 12% Geo damage bonus. That does not just apply to Ning Guang, it also applies to Zhong Li and whoever the hell else. So that's one of the beautiful things about the Jade screen. You also can see it last a long ass time. The other thing that's good about the Jade screen is it blocks projectiles. 
So if anybody tries to hit you with a projectile and you're behind this jade screen, it's going to hit the jade screen first. And the jade screen does have a, a fat amount of health. At level 8, it, it's 73.8% of uh, Ning Wong's HP. Now, my Ning Wong is at pretty much 16k HP. 73% uh, of that is like 11k damage. So it'll absorb 11k damage before it fucking shatters and gives out. Another amazing thing about Ning Wong's Jade Screen is that it's also considered a construct. And it will pulsate with Zhongli's Pillar. Which is fucking amazing, man. It's also a very... Her and Zhongli are a match made in heaven. Another good thing that you can do with Zhongli is you can intentionally shatter the Jade Screen. You see it didn't pop up, that's because... The pillar shattered it. You can't put the jade screen on top of the pillar. And that's a very useful combo that you want to do in actual combat. Because when you put it on top of the pillar and it shatters, it immediately refreshes her jade screen's cooldown. Thanks to her constellation too. When jade screen is shattered, its cooldown will reset. And it can occur once every 6 seconds. Now I just told y'all that that shit can hit for like 50 to 60k. So the first jade screen... You want to fucking throw it right on top of Zhong Li's pillar, get a free 60k damage, and then the second one, you want to put it next to Zhong Li's pillar, another 60k damage, walk through it for that 12% geo damage bonus. Really, really fucking juicy. But the final thing that makes this Jade screen super fucking cracked is her ult. When you pop Ning Wong's ult as a Jade screen is on the field, it also converts into more Star Jade gems. And let's go ahead and pull up the talent here. Star Jade damage per gem is 157%. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know how many damn Star Jade gems it turns into. I think it's like four or five of them. Three, three, four or five of them, something like that. While her ult without it is like another three, four or five of them. But the motherfucker's hitting for like 15k a pop. So just imagine 10, 15k is just falling on an enemy's head. That's a lot of damage, man. So you definitely want to always ult when the Jade screen is on the field. When Jade screen's on the field pop that fucking ult you're just gonna see a bunch of gems fly at the target and pop the shit out of them <laughs> bro it's ridiculous which also reminds me that her normal attack the charge attack remember i said earlier that you can only accumulate three star jade gems well if you have her at constellation six you can actually accumulate seven star jade gems after she ults after she ults you'll have seven star jade gems around your back not permanently but every time you ult with her you get seven star jade gems around your back and you do one charge attack Hit some seven star jades come right on top of that one charge attack for a fuck ton of damage. And again, at talent level eight, it's gonna be 79.4% times seven plus the 279% charge attack damage. So, yeah, it's, the woman is a monster. Like I said, man, she literally can do every bit as uh, much damage as a Ganyu. I got both of them. I play with both of them. I'm not fucking capping when I tell you this woman will straight up delete anybody except a GL slime and a GL Spectre. <laughs> you run into them GL slimes and them GL Spectres, my man, it is GG. <laughs> you ain't doing no damage. The motherfuckers bleed, GL. They are not going to be having it, bro. But if you go against anything else in the fucking game, anything else, Ning Guang will slap them motherfucking cheeks. That about covers it for her kit. Let's go ahead and talk about the constellations. Do you need constellations for Ning Guang? You don't need constellations for anybody. I'm always going to have that mindset. But I personally recommend going for C3 Ning Guang. And that's because the first one gives you AOE Geo damage with your normal attacks. The second one is going to give you that refresh on your Jade screen, which is, I tell you, that's 120k instantly when you put all them buffs on her. Uh, so you definitely want that. It's just very nice to have a six second fucking cooldown. Are you kidding me? Uh, to instantly refresh upon getting shattered. It's beautiful. And then the third one, it gives your ult three levels. That's fucking amazing too, because her ult is very, very strong. It's an insane amount of burst damage. Uh, you'll see that in the showcase at the end of the video, and probably some shit I put at the beginning of the video. But yeah, other than that, her fourth constellation, literally fucking useless. Who's mans? Who's mans? I don't know. Whoever it was, bro. Rock bottom that nigga. <laughs> Increase the level of Jade Screen by 3. Maximum upgrade level is 15. And then this one, when Star Shatter is used, Ning Guang gains 7 Star Jades. And boy, that shit powerful. Powerful. <laughs> Damn it, boy, that shit powerful. And this one is it too as well. Because like I said, if you look at it, I made my talent level up. So I'm, actually, I'm trying to make it seem like I did it for this video. I'm just too lazy to level this shit up. But this is a free-to-play talent level up it all this shit is possible for somebody who has literally zero constellations for ning Wong. you can get a level eight normal attack level eight jade screen you can get a level 10 if you crown her ass for the ult 
So this literal setup I have and all the damage you're going to see in the showcase and all that good stuff is all from this. I, you know, and I'll show you the build and all that stuff here in a bit. But yeah, long story short, my build clearly shows you that you don't need or my talent levels show you that you don't need all of them constellations for Ning Guang. You only need them for if you really want her to hit the, the maximum DPS ceiling. And goddamn, if she's already doing this kind of damage with these talent levels, fuck. I can only imagine with Star Shatter at level 15 and Normal Attack at level 10 or 12. You, you get the message. Anywho, let's go ahead and talk about the best weapons in the game for her. 100%, without a shadow of a doubt, the Memory of the Dust is the best weapon in the game for Ning Guang. It is absolutely amazing. It's a five-star weapon. Now, I'll be honest with you. I didn't even want this damn weapon. I, I pulled this way back when. I don't even know what banner that Ning Guang was on back then when Genshin had just released. But I ended up getting this shit instead. But it ended up working out for the best because it is it's cracked. It's a very, very powerful weapon. It's because of five star with 608 base attack gives you 50 fucking percent attack and then another 40 percent attack on top of that thanks to the uh, the Golden Majesty X skill. So it's just it's a ton of fucking damage, but. The bad news is it doesn't give us any crit strike at all. So if you're going to run this weapon, you're going to have to go for crit rate on the helmet. Unless you literally roll perfect fucking uh, artifact substats on all your other ones. Because otherwise you're going to have a shitty amount of crit strike. And you want to at least have 50% chance on your crit strike. <clears throat> so we ran crit rate on our uh, helmet. Would I like to run crit damage? Yeah, but if I take off this fucking 31% crit rate that this helmet's giving me, I'm gonna have the shittiest crit strike of all time. And we'll get into the artifacts here in a bit. Anyways, I know you guys, no, not everybody has this fucking five-star weapon. 100% understand that. Shit is not easy to get. And uh, five-star weapons in this game are expensive. Anyways, if you don't have that, let's go for Eye of Perception. All right, it's a good four-star catalyst that gives you a lot of attack percent as well. Uh, the, the, I'm not gonna lie to you, the, the scale is pretty much <laughs> fucking useless, but it's a good alternative option if you do not have a five-star catalyst. If you don't have that as well, another good option for you, I would say is the Wit Sith. Where are we at? This bad boy here scales with crit damage. Anytime you see something that scales with crit damage, that's a green light, bro. The problem is you're kind of gambling. I'm not gonna lie. You, 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 you're gambling with this one because if you don't get the attack is increased by 75% or you don't get increased all elemental damage by 60%, you pretty much got a useless fucking book buff because elemental mastery on a Geo character is pretty damn useless. Crystallization is not doing that much damage. It's not. And <laughs> yeah. So you are gambling. You got a 66% chance to get one of these buffs that are actually good. Now, Theoretically, you want to get that increase all elemental damage by 60%. If you get that buff, the 60% elemental damage boost, you're literally doing more damage than every book in the game. If you get that buff, if that buff and you have a refinement rank 5 of the Witsith, you're doing more damage than any other book in the game. That's how fucking cracked this book is if you get that buff. I mean that buff. But on the bad side, there's a 33% chance of that shit happening. And then this shit has a 30 second cooldown. So there are definitely some cons to running the Witsith, but that crit damage scaling is fucking amazing, man. Now I will be I will be straight up honest with you guys. The free to play options for catalyst users in this game, the free to play options like uh prototype amber, absolute dog shit for <laughs> for uh Ning Guang. It looks good, it looks aesthetically pleasing, but it's absolute dog shit for Ning Guang. What the fuck would I use this for? HP scaling and it regenerates my old she has 40 energy for her old bro. I don't need fucking energy recharge. So yeah, that's dog shit. And then the map of Mare has elemental mastery that scales with and it's like, bro, what, am, what the fuck am I gonna do with that? So yeah, that's, uh, oh my bad, I'm looking at the wrong one. This is the one I was looking at. Still, ass cheeks. We don't need elemental mastery on a Geo character, we don't. So it's kind of tough, I ain't gonna lie. I would literally go with either Eye of Perception, the Wit Sith, and if you don't have those, it's hard out here for a pimp, bro. <laughs> it's hard out here for a pimp, dog. Shit, man. I'm still laughing, uh, but uh, um, <laughs> fucking hilarious. What I will say though, the Black Cliff Agate is amazing. If you can actually afford this, they only pop up in the uh, in the shop. You know, when you can go and buy like a maximum of three copies, you can't get this when it pops up in the shop. And if if you have the the fucking star glitter to afford it, get it. This shit is amazing. This is very very good four star weapon. It's like a one of them four star weapons that's secretly a five star weapon honestly but it does depend on you killing enemies it's not a one boss item okay if you're only fighting one fucking individual boss 
it's not worth using but if you're in a domain killing a bunch of enemies you're gonna get them stacks up and this bitch here is a monster so i do recommend using this if you don't have any of the other options and truth be told that's about it, man. The Royal Grimoire is also a good option. Okay. I like the Royal Grimoire. I'm not going to lie to you. Upon damaging an opponent, increase crit rate by 8%. Max 5 stacks. Yeah, this is a solid one too, man. I'd recommend getting this one as well. Royal Grimoire. Uh, I don't know about Solar Pearl. Never invested in it. I know that's one of the Battle Pass weapons. The, my problem with the Solar Pearl is normal attack hits increase elemental skill and elemental burst damage by 20%. Cool. I like that. But the other part... Elemental skill or elemental burst hits increase normal attack damage by 20%. If we're not getting a charged attack buff, that's fucking useless. We are all about charged attack with Ningguang. So if they, I don't know if that means normal attack as in normal or charged or your literal normal attacks. If that's the case. I don't recommend the Solar Pearl. It's a trap. And uh, Frost Bear would be an okay option because it scales with attack, but truth be told, mm -hmm, all right. Like I said, it's hard out here for pimp. If you ain't got, if you ain't got them, uh, them other weapons, I recommend it, man. But yeah, those are gonna be the best weapons I would recommend for Ning Guang. She's all about attack, man. I'm not gonna lie, she's all about attack. All right, now moving on to what I believe to be the absolute best artifact set in the game for Ning Guang at this current point in time for Patch 2.2. It's gonna be. The Blizzard Strayer set. Do not sleep. No, I'm, just, I'm just kidding, bro. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Calm your tits, boy. It's going to be the Shimanawa. It's going to be the Shimanawa set. The Shimanawa set is absolute fire for Ningguang. Do not fucking sleep on it. I will explain everything there is to know about it here in a bit. But yeah, when casting an elemental skill, if the character has 15 or more energy, they lose 15 energy. And your normal charge and plunging attack damage is increased by a whopping 50 fucking percent for 10 whole seconds. And then you get attack plus 18% on top of that. Now, two-piece Archaic Petra, 15% Geo damage bonus, plus two-piece Noblesse Oblige, 20% Elemental Burst damage bonus. It's, it was good, but it's been dethroned by a long shot. In fact, I like the Retracing Belied better than that, honestly, because it scales with her charge attack. It affects her charge attack. Whereas two-piece Noblesse and two-piece Archaic Petra, you get a 15% Geo damage bonus, which does contribute to a charge attack and her ult. But the 20% elemental burst damage bonus only contributes to her ult, doesn't contribute to the charge attack. It's not that good. It's good for support DPS. But that even got dethroned in 2.2 because of the severed fate in 2.1. Bao, Raiden, Ace, uh, Raiden, Shogun, A, whatever the hell you want to call her. Sexy motherfucking waifu here. The emblem of severed fate dethroned two-piece archaic petrol with two-piece no bless. Because it's going to give you a, a bigger elemental burst damage bonus than 35%. With energy recharge in there, it's going to give you like a 50-60% elemental burst damage bonus. So I recommend this if you're going for a support DPS in Guam. But if you're going for main DPS, Shimanawa is literally absolutely cracked for it. If you go to her talent, look at her ult energy cost. It costs 40. 40 fucking energy. You know how fast Ningguang's ult fills up? So when you use 50, 15 energy, uh, you're going to get that shit right back. Boom. You, you pop that bad boy, you get your 50% damage bonus. 18% attack on top of that. You slapping cheeks, bro. And by the time you pop this on somebody's head, you're already regenerating energy. If you have less than 15 energy, it's not going to activate. You got to have more than 15 energy. If you do, it's going to rob you of 15 energy and then you get the buff, okay? Uh, the second thing I want you to know is just like it said in the description, if you pop your elemental skill and the buff does activate, um, you can't pop it again, and it's going to take another 15 energy from you. It did say that. Once you get the buff, it will not activate again in that 10-second duration. You have to wait for it to expire first, then it'll pop up again. If you have a full ult, like if you have full meter with Ning Guang, if you pop this the elemental skill, it's going to take away 15 energy and give it right the fuck back, especially if you, if you land your attack on the enemy. It's going to give it right the fuck back. But yeah, let's go ahead and move on to team comps. Team comps for a main DPS Ning Guang, you 100% with any damn Geo character. Always want to make sure you have another Geo character in the party because it's just free buffs. Why? Like, why would you not? Why would you not do that? I don't get it. Uh, increased shield strength by 15%. Additionally, characters protected by a shield will have the following special characteristics. Damage dealt increased by 15%. And then dealing damage to enemies will decrease their Geo resistance by 20% for 15 fucking seconds. Like... You have to have another Geo Resonant, I mean, another Geo in the party to get that Geo Resonance buff. It's just too fucking good to not have for a Geo main DPS. It just doesn't make sense. So, non-negotiable, have another Geo in the party, preferably 
the boy Jungli. That's the boy, the man, the myth, the motherfucking legend. The oldest Arkin of the seven. You want to have him in a party, he's an absolute beast for so many damn reasons. Uh, for one, he gives you a fucking shield and you don't have to worry about taking damage. The most busted shield in the game. Uh, for two, his shield, again, uh, let me see. Let me go and see if I can find it real quick. Yeah, his shield actually decreases the elemental resistance of the opponents in, uh, near, near his shield by 20%. So they're gonna get another in total 40% geo resist. That's literally like having an Anemo Swirl character with a Viridison fucking set on them. It's it's amazing. So yeah, you put that, combine it with the geo resonance buff, you got 40% geo damage reduction, or my bad, damage resistance to the enemies that are affected by it. And then the final reason he's he's fucking amazing for the team comp is because his ult burst damage is just cracked. His ult burst damage does like a, over 100k. I mean. And I, I, there's still room to put this bad boy to, I can crown him if I want to. I probably will. I love this dude to death. My freaking shield's only level six over here. You know what I mean? But basically this dude with the emblem of severed fate, do not fucking sleep on it. You can run the tenacity of the Millilith. I'm not saying you can't run that shit. I personally haven't farmed the tenacity of the Millilith. But even if I did have it farmed, if I wanted to do more burst damage with John Lee's ult, I'd still go the emblem of the seven fate, man. I mean, this dude's cracked with this shit. I still go HP on the hourglass because I, you know, you still need your HP on fucking Jong Lee. You want his shield to be good. He's still gonna do more ult damage with that HP. You want the HP. But if you wanted to do another like 12% more elemental burst damage uh, on Jong Lee's ult, um, then you would switch this out for energy recharge. You'd drop, you'd lose a lot of HP. I ain't gonna lie, you'd probably be at like 22k from there. But you'd get another 11% elemental burst, and it is possible. If you know what the fuck you're doing, you can do that. You get another, I mean, now the man gonna be hitting for like 150k or something, you know? Uh, but yeah, he's, he's amazing, man. You gotta have one Geo in the party. I almost fucking forgot, my bad, fellas. Uh, artifacts, How, what, what should you be going for? You wanna go for obviously crit damage, crit rate, Ningguang's all about attack. So you wanna go attack, percent, attack on the HP, right? Crit damage, crit rate, attack, percent, and raw attack. We almost got a solid one. Rolls were not that, we we're, were all right, but I'll fucking take that, I'll take it. Anyways, the next one, the feather, you wanna go for again, crit damage, percent, crit rate, percent. Uh, I don't know why I'm saying percent. Crit damage, crit rate, attack, percent, and then an energy recharge, elemental mastery, we'll take either one. Energy recharge, preferably. Um, and then for the hourglass, you want to go for crit damage, crit rate, a raw attack, and energy recharge. Finally, for this, crit damage, crit rate, attack, percent, raw attack. And then finally, uh, crit damage, a raw attack, attack, percent, and energy recharge. So you can see we got some pretty damn good rolls. Uh, if you're, if you got like great phenomenal crit rate rolls on all your artifacts, like I said earlier, then you can swap this for crit damage and do a fuck ton of damage. But man, I'm telling you, it ain't happening. Not with my fucking RNG luck, bro. This game <laughs> takes a dump on my fucking head every time I do a domain. Well, you know, with these stats, we're at 49.3% and 149.5% crit damage. The next two characters, y'all know the damn drill. Bennett and Mona are absolutely broken. If you have these two, they are definitely great synergistic support uh, options for uh, Zhong Li and Ning Guang. Um, if you don't have them too, you can go for Albedo if you have him. He's fucking amazing with Ning Guang and Zhong Li. Absolutely great. The only problem is if you're going against like the Fatui people and you gotta get some shields down, chances are if you have three GLs on your team, you probably don't have the right fourth element to get rid of uh i don't know electro skirmisher shield or whatever the fuck the case may be but uh yeah you can do that you can also do child as a support dps but not fuck that who cares about that the reason you want to have child on the team is because he increases your party's normal attack level by one so ning guang would have a level nine for me or if you have her at crowned you'd have one level higher and that charge attack buff as you can see let's look at it if I were to be level nine, I'd have a 17% damage bonus to my charged attack and like a 5% damage bonus to my star jades. That's fucking, he does a lot of damage. There's a lot of damage. So yeah, you can put child on the team just to give Ning Guang a fucking level of, uh, you know, her normal attack talent level. But yeah, choose the whatever support characters you're comfortable with. Me personally, I love Bennett and I love Mona. The reason I love Mona is because I can put the tenacity of the Millilith set on her and I can put the Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayer book on her, a refinement rank five, 
swap over to Ning Guang and give her a 68% attack damage bonus for 10 seconds. Thanks to the to Millilith and the Thrilling Tales of the Dragon. Not to mention, if I ult this damn girl, I only have it at level, talent level 6, I also get a 52% damage bonus for the next 4.5 seconds to my Ning Guang or my Zhongli, whoever one I want. So she's just a attack buffing monster, bro, <laughs> like, with this with this on. Now, don't get me wrong. She ain't doing no fucking damage with this set on. In fact, <laughs> I don't have her in a party yet to do any damage. I don't care if she was doing zero. Her literal job is to buff the hell out of my Ning Guang. Now, if I wanted to do damage, I'm going to give her the set that Zhongli has, Ember of Severed Fate. But since I don't have the right artifacts for Zhongli's tenacity of the Millilith set, that's how we have that setup going. Anyways, for Bennett, y'all know the drill. If you don't know what Bennett does by now, man, I don't know what, yeah, you living under a rock or something, boy, what the hell? No, bless oblige on him. And then when he ults, I'm getting like a 900 fucking attack boost. Now I will say you do want to have a weapon on Bennett that gives him the most raw, I mean the most high base attack possible because his ult does scale with his base attack. That means the 644 you see right there. So you want to have the base attack on your weapon as high as possible because that's the only thing that's going to affect that number I just showed you guys. Um, I'm probably missing a couple of things because I didn't script none of this. Normally when I script, everything's fucking perfect, but it also takes me like 80 times the amount of time to make the video. So, But hopefully I covered everything. If I didn't, be sure to comment down below. I have no problem answering questions. Uh, is there anything else we're missing? Nah, I think I covered everything, man. So you know what? We're going to go ahead and show you guys the showcase. We're going to show you all how to slap them motherfucking cheeks. Whatever I got prepared for you, I'll show you. I haven't recorded it at this time of the video. So I'm just, you know, <laughs> just going to show you whatever the hell I end up going for. I'm probably going to slap up some bosses like the fucking uh, Signora. Slap her cheeks another time in child just so you guys can get some good DPS numbers. But yeah, man, if you guys end up enjoying the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe. I know I talked a little bit more than I normally do, but hey, I was trying to get the message across. So stay safe, enjoy the video, catch you guys on the flip side.